Have you ever struggled with procrastination or finding the motivation to get things done, feeling like you're not living up to your own expectations? I won't lie, I struggle with procrastination a lot, and it's a challenge, especially when I have important deadlines or tasks that I'm not really excited about. I've had those nights before exams or hours before project deadline, and they're stressful. It sometimes makes me wonder, Am I really doing my best? But when I'm stuck in this cycle, I remember my family history. My ancestors were Bushi, the warrior class of Japan during the Edo period. Growing up, my grandparents taught me about the importance of self-discipline, perseverance, and compassion through the teachings of Bushido, the way of the warrior. Before we get into the heart of Bushido, let's clear up some confusion. These days, the term samurai and bushi are often used interchangeably, but they're not the same. The bushi were the warrior class of Japan, a broad category of encompassing all warriors. But among these warriors, there were distinct class, the samurai. They were a specific class within the bushi, serving feudal wards bounded by the code of Bushido, which translated as the way of warrior. It's a moral and ethical compass guiding the samurai in feudal Japan. Now you've probably heard of the samurai before. They've taken the world by storm in countless movies, TV shows, animes, and stories. What made them so different than other warriors is their mindset, which is based on a unique philosophies and discipline. They live according to a moral guideline principle called Bushido, maintaining self-discipline and preservance. So with that understanding in place, let's now delve into the principles of Bushido, the code that guided the samurai and continues to guide me today. The first principle of Bushido is Gi, which stands for rightness or justness. For the samurai, Gi was all about making decisions that were right and just even when those decisions were not the most convenient or the easiest to make. It's a lesson in prioritizing fairness, morality, and justice over personal desires or societal pressures. In our day-to-day -day lives, applying gi means making decisions that align with our true values even when those decisions are tough. It's about choosing to tackle that challenging task now instead of putting it off later. It's about sticking to our commitments and responsibilities rather than choosing the path of least resistance. When I'm faced with a challenging task and I feel the urge to procrastinate, I pause and think about the principle of Gi. I remind myself about the importance of making the right decision even if it's not the easiest. I think about my responsibilities and my commitments and how tackling the task head-on aligns with those. Instead of opting for an easy route and pushing the task aside, I choose to face it. This reflection of the Samurai's principle of Gi serves as a powerful reminder to me and often provides the motivation I need to overcome my inclination to procrastinate and take action instead. In a way, it's just not about completing the task at hand, but about practicing self-discipline and living up to my own expectations. When it comes to the principle of you or courage, it's not about fearlessly charging into the battlefield as the samurai did. It's also about having the moral courage to step outside of our comfort zones and face the tasks that we find difficult or challenging. I've often noticed I put off things because they seem too challenging or lie outside of my comfort zone and these tasks might range from difficult conversations, demanding tasks at work, even writing an engaging piece of content. But it's through expanding our comfort zone slowly that we grow. We transform things that were once uncomfortable into areas of comfort and expertise. This is where the essence of you truly lies. If you're looking to get out of your comfort zone and try something new, one of the most important skills to have right now is writing. Whether you're creating content for social media or developing ideas for new industries, writing is essential. But let me be honest, writing can be tough, especially when you're just starting out. That's why I rely on Grammarly Go to help bring out my full potential. As a content creator, I know firsthand how important it is to hook your audience with a great ideas and compelling content. But sometimes coming up with that perfect hook can be a challenge. That's where Grammarly Go can help you out. Not only can it help you with content creation, but it can also help with everyday tasks like writing emails. Just enter a prompt and you will instantly get a well-written email draft. And with the ability to adjust formality, tone, and length with just few clicks, you can ensure your writing is clear and mistake-free. But content creation isn't the only thing you do as a creator. 
A lot of the work you do involves running your channel and taking care of administrative tasks. That's why I love that Grammarly Go allows me to reply emails quickly and efficiently. With the reply feature, it summarizes the email and suggests a way to respond so you can get through your inbox quicker and focus on what really matters. And the best part of it is that Grammarly Go is free to use and try out. As a free user, you get 100 prompts per month to try out Grammarly Go. So if you're ready to take your writing to the next level and get out of your comfort zone, sign up now at grammarly.com slash Yuriohama and get 20% off Grammarly Premium. Thank you Grammarly Go for sponsoring the proportion of this video. If you have ever noticed the phrase on my channel banner, Kaizen, the philosophy of continuous improvement, you've had a glimpse of how much the principle of Kaizen influences my life. In fact, it's one of my life mottos. Kaizen amplifies that we should constantly strive for betterment, not just in our skills, but also in cultivating discipline, focus, and resilience. In the age of samurai, warriors would devote themselves to ceaseless training and growth, spanning not just their martial skills, but also cultural disciplines like arts and literature. They viewed mastery not as an end goal, but a lifelong journey. So how do I embody this into my daily routine? I've come up with something I call the Kaizen Hour. Every day I dedicate an hour to self-improvement. As a full-time YouTuber, I'm constantly trying to enhance my content, right? So this could be honing my script writing, improving my filming techniques, or experimenting with better titles and thumbnails, taking other creators' courses to learn more about creating videos. But it doesn't stop at work. I also apply Kaizen to my personal life. I regularly hit the gym, practice meditation, read books on various topics, and consciously step out of my comfort zone to try new things. If you want to embrace Kaizen, I suggest picking an area in your life that you wish to improve. Dedicate a specific amount of time each day to this. It could be as little as like 15 minutes. The trick is consistency, showing up every day, and even when progress feels slow. The goal isn't to be the best, it's about being better than you were yesterday. By adopting this mindset, even the most intimidating tasks become approachable and the journey to mastery evolves into an enriching experience. So the next time you see my channel banner, I hope it serves as kind of like a reminder of Kaizen and inspires you to always keep learning and growing. The next principle I embrace is Jing, which stands for benevolence or compassion. It might seem a bit unexpected to associate samurais, known for their martial abilities with compassion, but they indeed were expected to balance their strength with kindness towards the people they served and protected. In our own lives, applying Jin can mean showing compassion towards ourselves. It's important to remember that we are human and it's perfectly okay to struggle with procrastination and maintaining self-discipline. Instead of getting down on ourselves during these times, which I really struggle, <laughs> we should offer ourselves compassion, understanding that everyone has off days. At the same time, it's crucial to remember that pushing through the inertia, overcoming procrastination, and working steadily towards our goals is one of the best acts of self-care we can perform. So while practicing Jin, be kind to yourself, acknowledge your feelings, but also motivate yourself to stay disciplined and focused. I know it's really hard. I probably struggle the most with Jin. The samurai were always expected to demonstrate respect in their manners, actions, and speech, even towards their enemies. In today's concept, this principle reminds me to respect my time, my goals, and the people around me. I try to embody the spirit of Rei in my daily life. So time, for example, is a precious resource that I choose to respect. This means setting a clear schedule for my work and sticking to them. We all have limited amount of time in our lives before we pass away, and none of us will live forever. I approach my goals with sense of reverse, sort of. I view them not as a mere visual thinking, but as vital milestones that deserve my undivined attention and effort. And this mindset keeps me disciplined and pushes procrastination away. And finally, a key part of my interpretation of Ray is to respect myself and those around me. It's a gentle reminder of the value of the work I put and the importance of connections I make. It helps me to understand that every task, no matter how seemingly day and contributes to my broader journey and affect those who follow and support my content, my work. So here's a piece of advice from my own reflections. Consider your time, goals, and relationships from a perspective of respect rather than I have to do it. The, this simple shift in your mindset could actually significantly improve your self-discipline and motivation, providing a strong defense against your temptation to procrastinate. Because it's not 
any more a task you have to do but you want to do and you respect that wish okay so now let's talk about the principle makoto which stands for honesty and sincerity the samurai were true to their word and sincere in their actions with no room for deception or dishonesty there's even a saying called bushini ni gonwanai which means a bushi would never say things twice. So this principle strikes a chord with me as it requires absolute honesty with oneself, especially when it comes to facing procrastination or um, lack of motivation. I try to embody Makoto by being completely transparent with myself about my habits. If I notice I've been slacking off or postponing tasks, I don't sugarcoat it or make excuses. Instead, I acknowledge it, understand why it happened, and start planning my way out of it. One thing that has helped me stick to this principle is keeping a procrastination log. Whenever I catch myself procrastinating, I jot down the task I was putting off, the reason why I was avoiding it, and I how I felt at the moment. This practice has helped me identify patterns and address the root causes of my procrastination. In essence, the principle of Makoto teaches us to be truthful about our self and sincere in our efforts to overcome it. By being honest with ourselves, we can identify the real issues that lead to procrastination and tackle them head on. It's a constant, sincere commitment to improving ourselves, which is in the end, a journey rather than a destination. You can't fix things if you don't know the cause. So understanding is the first step. Now let's discover the principle of Meiyo, the principle of honor. It was a central part of a samurai's life, like maintaining dignity and prestige safeguarding the honor of their master and their clan. This honor or disgrace was deeply shameful to them. So how I apply Mayo in my life is honoring my commitments, not only in my work as a YouTuber, but also in personal aspects. So every video I upload on time, every gym session that I don't skip, each book I finish reading and every time I give back to my family, these are all ways I maintain my personal honor. They increase my sense of self-worth and dignity, making me feel proud and accomplished. To me, it's about keeping the promise I make to myself. So for actionable steps, what has helped me honor my commitments is setting clear achievable goals. This might mean breaking a big task into smaller manageable tasks like planning a video, setting reading target or scheduling my gym sessions. I also make it a point to celebrate small wins because every accomplishment, no matter how small, boosts my dignity and reinforces my commitment. So in the face of procrastination, remember to uphold your commitment. That's not just about getting things done, it's about maintaining your personal honor. When we speak about Chugi, the principle of loyalty, we think about the samurai's unwavering loyalty to their lord, which often demanded significant personal sacrifices, even the ultimate sacrifice of their lives. I believe that today we can interpret this principle as being loyal to ourselves and our aspirations since we don't have any lords. <laughs> so our loyalty should be our plans, our goals, and our personal growth. I found that every time I've strayed from my plans, whether it's neglecting my daily content creation routine, skipping a day at the gym, or forgetting to read, I felt as though I was being disloyal to myself. Like it's a strange feeling, but it's True. So in terms of actionable steps for Chugi, I focus on not letting failures deter me. It's really hard actually. I make my plans visible and on my wall, on my phone to hold myself accountable. I write basically quarterly goals and I just take a, take a picture of it and I set it as my wallpaper on my phone. So that every time I pick my, my phone, I can see that. If I have a bad day at the gym or my you know video doesn't get the response I was hoping for, which is really hurtful. <laughs> I remind myself that these are just the parts of journey, not the end of it. I remain loyal to my goals, take lessons from the hurdles and keep going, even though it hurts a lot. While the samurai lived by a strict code of conduct, they also understood the importance of being adaptable in the face of changing circumstances. On a battlefield, conditions could shift rapidly and the ability to quickly adapt was often the difference between life and death. This extended to their lives of the battlefield as well as the samurai had to navigate the complexities of social and political changes during different eras in Japanese history. We live in a constantly changing world and the ability to adapt to new situations or challenges is a key aspect of creating the lives we dream of living. We often become too perfectionist or stubborn in our methods. This girl. <laughs> but I remind myself the period when things don't go as planned. If I find that I'm not making progress in one area, I try to adopt my approach or shift my focus to something else that's productive. So it keeps the momentum going and helps me stay disciplined. So here's a small piece of 
advice embrace change don't run from it if you're struggling with a task find a new approach if a goal seems unreachable break it down into smaller manageable steps and be adaptable doesn't mean being aimless it means being flexible in your journey towards your goals we explored the nine principles of bushido which can help us overcome procrastination deal with unmotivation and improve self-discipline remember that embracing these principles requires continuous improvement not an overnight transformation just because you know them doesn't mean that you're going to apply all of them like i still struggle with them even though i've been thought since them like my childhood <laughs> It's been 22 years and I still struggle. So start with one principle that resonates with you and apply it to your life. And practice makes progress. So thank you for joining me on this journey on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay dedicated, disciplined, and strive for excellence. See you soon. Bye.